Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully, your waving's been happy. What I have for you today is how to make the basic Solomon bar or Cobra bar. Solomon bracelet. Cobra bracelet. It goes by many names. But this one is the one that most likely you, because I know I did, cut my teeth on in this world of paracording. This is the basis from so many other bracelets. This is where you would start. Very many options. Today we're going to be working on this solid black one. And hopefully the camera, you'll be able to see it. We're going to be doing a one color one. But I do explain how to make it in two colors. Here's some examples. These are all just basic two color Solomons. Here's a breast cancer awareness one with the little added ribbon. And then from there, you can step up into the, something a little bit more advanced. This would be a stitched Solomon dragon. This is simply a, a heart stitched Solomon bar. And here we have a two-color herringbone stitch Solomon bar. Um, I'll be making a video on the, the herringbone stitch. That one's that's next on the list. In fact, I'm going to do it with this bracelet I just made. But stick around because I'm going to give you the tips, tricks, insights. I'm going to show you how to set up the core strands, all that good stuff. This it's for the complete newbie. And even if you're not new, stick around and watch because I give all the tips and tricks and commentaries that hopefully will help you improve. So, if you want to learn how to make a paracord bracelet, stick around because we're going to get right to it. Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Fair Chords of Kindness. How you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is one of the basic knots or bracelets that most of us cut our teeth on. If I could use that figure of speech. Um, this is one that is the basis for so many other bracelets. Learn this one. Um, it's referred to as a Solomon bar or Solomon knot, Cobra bar, Cobra knot, um, Cobra bracelet, so, you know, Solomon bracelet, various names, but they all are referring to this one weave. And this, you know, according to Paracord legend, this is the one that started it all back in Vietnam. If you know the history of any of this. Um, now, I am going to, normally I wouldn't show you how to do the core strand setups and all that. I'd point you to the playlist. But I will say this. I will put in the cards um, a link to, uh, what's the name of the video? Hang on, I'll tell you the name of the video. Setting up core strands and some basic weaving tips. It's, it's in my core strand setup playlist and it's also in the tips and tricks playlist. Um, which... The link to both those playlists will be in the description below. Um, but with that said, I, I'll, I'll make this explanation of uh, all this kind of brief. That's one thing I, I, I'll emphasize. Learn to set up the various core strands. And I'll give you an example right here. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, I, I'll give you some context. I most often use a 5 8 inch buckle. Now, I know some people will use a half inch or 3 8 and they'll only run through the slot, uh, you know, once or twice or whatever. In my opinion, it just doesn't look right. Like I said, go check out the video I just recommended, the setting up core strands and basic weaving tips. Go check that out, and, I, and I'll explain that. Hopefully, it makes sense why I do it the way I do it. Okay, but um, with that said, 
I'm gonna what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a two strand core with a double cow hitch. Double cow hitch at the bottom and at the top. Now there's two ways you can actually go about setting this up. Um one is quick, simple, and you know, it's quick and fast. But the other one that I'll show you, I'm gonna show you both of them, but the the first one I'm gonna show you would be used most often I find the use for it when let's say for example right uh I got ten feet of cord. I'm gonna just go with ten feet, that's probably gonna be more than I need. Um but I'm gonna just go with ten feet for a seven inch bracelet. That'll fit or I should say a wrist, a bracelet that will fit a seven inch wrist. Um but if you're doing it in one color, you can do the quick method and just go and do it. And I'll show you that in just a second. But if you're doing one that's going to have two colors and you've melded the two cords together by burning the ends and melting them and putting them together, usually that lump in the cord, it doesn't like to go through these slots very well. Unless you get it just right and all that, and it can be tricky. So with that said, what ends up happening is in order to do this double cow hitch at the bottom, on the bottom buckle where you would start, you have to start with one end of your cord and feed it all the way through and create both those cow hitches. Does that make sense? And I, I, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, like I say, I ain't perfect at this. I get confused sometimes. So, you know, bear with me here. But I would suggest familiarizing yourself with how to do this. And then once I do this, I'm going to pull it out, and then I'll just show you the quick and easy method, which, you know, if you're just going with one color like one color like I'm doing today, it, it, it's pretty quick. Okay, let's see. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to try to show you this. Okay, we got our 5 8 inch buckle, and we're going to start on the, bottom, on the bottom side of our jig, right? Now, you just take one end of your cord. Let's see. <clears throat> What you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to go through the top of the buckle. Pull you enough slack through that you got something to work with. And then, now if you're doing this, I'm going to take all this out and I'm going to show you the other method also. But if you're going to actually do this to set up a bracelet, you're going to want to pull almost half of your cord through when you do this. But I'll show you. Like I said, you go through the top of the buckle and then you come back out to the left side. You go over your buckle or over the I'm sorry. Let me let me say that again. Through the top of the buckle, and you come out this way with your working end. Then you go over the strand right there, and then you come from underneath, and you go through the slot. And this loop that you've created, you go under this loop, through this loop. So basically what, what what I have just done is created, I know it's kind of hard to say, I've created one single cow hitch. Now, you, you take out working in, that same working in, and you're going to come over. Pull everything to the side and make room. Make sure I'm going to do this right. We're going to go down through the top of the buckle. And this loop right here, you're going to take that working in and come back up through that loop. All right. Now, take the working in and come through the bottom of the buckle, bottom of the slot, come up. And this loop you've created here, you're going to go through that loop. And you're going to pull. Uh, so basically what you have done I'm going to kind of get it, pull it a little tight so it'll, you can see what I've done here. 
basically what you have done. I know it's kind of hard to see here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can hopefully see this a little bit better. Not really because it's black. Yeah, you can't see that. Basically, yeah, there you go. Basically, you've just created your double cow hitch, but you fed it in from one side and you did it all and you come out the other. And like I said, this comes in handy when you have melded two cords together and there's that big lump of plastic because your lump of plastic will be back here and you'll never have to feed it through this slot because a lot of times it's hard to get it to go through there. Does that make sense? That's, that's, that's why doing it this way would come in useful. Does that make sense? Okay, now, with that said, I'm going to back out. Okay, sorry about that, folks. See, like I said, I'm not a filmmaker. I reached up there to zoom out, and I accidentally stopped recording. So I just started it back. So we're going to have a splice there in our, in our, in our video. I apologize. Hey. <laughs> okay, so see what I did? Okay, now I'm going to take this apart. And I probably should make a separate video just for this and put it on the course setup. Because this is something I, I've never seen anybody explain it. And it, it, until I started doing this over and over and over, and it kind of clicked in my head. Oh, okay, I see why you would learn how to do it either way. Right? Okay. But that quick method, if you will, especially if you're just using, you're going to make, you know, a double cow hitch. It don't matter what bracelet you're making. If you're going to do a double cow hitch on the bottom and you, you want to do a quick method, what you'll do is take both ends of your cord and find the halfway point. Mindful of your twist. You'll hear me say that a thousand times in these videos. And you take that, the halfway point. Now let me see. We're going to go in. Is that going to be right? Let's see. We're going to come in from the bottom. Take your ha take that halfway point and fade it through here. Now, this can kind of be, be kind of tricky because this cord is going to be a little thick. But it will go through there if you just work on it. Work it. I'm doing this right. I can't quite see. I say the quick method. And I'm over here struggling with it, right? If you need be, you can get something. Kind of poke it through there a little bit. Now, you've got your loop right here that you've just fed through. Now, what you do is you take your two strands and you pull them up through there. You pull it tight that way. Now, we're going to separate it. You're going to take one side go this way. And take... Let me zoom back now. So you, zoom back in. Don't stop the video. Just zoom in, Steve. All right? Now, what we're going to do. Is going to, we got left left side, right side. Yeah, make sure I'm doing this right. You're going to come over here and you're going to come up through the bottom of the buckle. And this loop, if I can get this thing to sit right, and this loop that you've created, you're going to take that working end and feed through there. And pull that slack through. Kind of cinch it up. Now you've got, I know it's hard to say, but you got one cow hitch on this side. You're done. Now you go to this side. And you do the same thing, just in mirror image. So... Kind of pull everything to the side and you come up through the bottom of the buckle. Well, that majority of your slack and this loop. 
this, this loop that you've created. You feed that cord down through that and you pull it out. You pull your slide through. And you just created that second cow hitch. Alright, now I'm going to back out again. And what I'm going to do, now that I got this, before I tighten all this up, I'm going to make sure that I've got basically the, the halfway point is here. So I'm going to grab my two cords and I'm going to run them out, run my fingers out to the end. Mine, you know, trying to keep them, you know, the left one on the left side, the right one on, don't let them get crossed over. That's close enough to the halfway point. Makes sense. You don't want them like this or like that. You want relatively same. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the, the top buckle and we're going to do a cow hitch. Now how we're going to do this is we're going to take both cords and we're going to go through the top of the buckle. Alright, and I'll go ahead and do this. You split the rails here. You split these two. And the two that you just fed through, you come up, up between them, and you pull out your slide. Making sure that they, these these two core strings, because these are going to make sure they're not crossed. Now, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this one that's toward the left and get it out of my way. I'm going to do the right side first. Take that working in. You're going to come up from underneath and go through the slot. Pull out the majority of your slot. And this loop that's being created right here, you're going to go through this loop. Pull out the majority of your slot. Now you have a cow hitch on this side. Now you're going to do the same thing on this side. Slide everything over and come from underneath up through the slot. Pull out the majority of your slot. Mindful of that twist right there. Now, same thing. This loop that you just created, you're going to go down through this loop. Pull out the majority of your slot. That makes sense. And you're going to tighten it up. Now, the way I would tighten this up, normally, I'll start down here at this bottom with these two pieces. Let me zoom back in and I'll show you. These two pieces that come out and go across the top of the cow hitch here. Hey, this is not the easiest thing to see. Here, let me see if this will work. Hang on, folks. Like I said, I'm not a filmmaker. Cam yeah, maybe that'll help. Yeah, there you go. These two pieces that are coming up. Sorry, right here. They go cross over the top. Pull them. And then just kind of. You see, what I'm saying? all you do is tightening it up a little bit. Okay. Now, that's it. I'm gonna back out. Now, this is how my jig works. I know everybody doesn't have a jig like this. This is how mine works. Okay. I'm going to reach up here at the top, and I'll show you just how, how I tighten all this up. You know, maybe you can use this. Maybe not. Don't know. But I'll show you how I do this. Okay. Get these out of the way. we got our two core strands coming up, right? They're going through the tops of this buckle. Where they come out on the bottom, we say that, and the same one on the other side. Grab those where they're coming out. I pull them, and it'll it'll pull these tight. Now we we ain't trying to wrench it down and break our buckle when we're pulling so tight, but you know, pull the slack out, reach up there and pinch it, pinch those two, and leave this one on the edge loose. And then grab right here and just kind of tighten it up. 
Push it up with your thumb. And kind of roll that knot. As you're pulling with your hand toward back toward this way, you're pushing that, that hitch up and kind of rolling it. And that'll kind of tighten it up. Now we just do the same thing on the other side. Pull out your slack. We got that. That's all there is to it. Now, I say this. These are not for measuring your jig. That's what, not what these are for. I know all the jigs, they have these things on there. That's not what they're for. Take you an independent measuring device, a ruler, and measure. From connection point of this buckle where the male and the female end meets to the connection point down here where the male and the female end meet. It, it, male and female end meets. That's what you're measuring. We're not using this. This is for something else, and I'll show you in a second. Now, on my jig, now, you know, your jig may be set up differently, but that's not what that's for on my jig. But so we come up here to where this is right at, okay? Like I said, I started off with 10 feet on a 5 8 inch buckle, two-strand core, double cow hitch. I'm making this, I'm going to make this for my, my wrist. I got a seven inch wrist. Now for me, the add to measurement. Now I know it's different for everybody, depending on how tight and all that kind of, there's all kind of variables and factors that come into it. So, you know, don't hold me to this number I'm about to give you. But for me, in the way I like mine to fit, I'm going to add to that seven inch wrist measurement. I'm going to add to it an inch and a quarter. So when I measure from this connecting point to the connection point at the bottom, I'm going to take that seven and add to it an inch and a quarter for a total of eight and a quarter inches. Does that make sense? Now, I've already, I already had the measurement set at right at about eight inches, right? And I got it relatively tight. Now I'm going to take the bottom part of my jig, the carriage, and I'm going to tighten it up and wrench down the pressure. That way everything will be tight. But we're going to make sure that I have it set. Let me, let me stand up so I can see better. Yeah, that's right at 8 inches. And the way my jig works, I'll zoom out and you can see this. Not going to be able to see all this on camera because some of it's going to be right out of frame. At the end of this, the way my jig's made, this is not for everybody, but the way my jig's made, this right here, I butt it up against my chest, and I use it to hold. And I flip it sideways, because my adjusting screw is down here. And that's where these come in, these measurements. Like I said, I've got it set at an 8 inches, and I need one. Uh, a quarter inch more. I take my screwdriver. I loosen up the screw. That way my carriage can slide. Like I said, I put this piece in my chest. I grab this carriage and I pull it toward me. My chest is using it to hold it. Does that make sense? Now because these cords are going to stretch and it's going to tighten up all these, when I do this, it's going to tighten up all these hitches and everything. I've got to move this carriage more than an actual quarter of an inch. It's got, it's going to, it's only going to reflect up here of a quarter of an inch. But when I'm actually going to be moving it because it's taking out all the slack, it's going to be more. I'm going to go with that right there. And I'm holding tension and I'm going to tighten it up. Now I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to measure it again. So let me stand up so I can see this. Wow, that's way too much. Let's back it off just a little bit. Now it's real loose, and I don't like it loose. That's not it. Stand 
Okay, you'll take two blues, or two. Let's try this one more time. Here, give me a sec, folks. I have to do this. Make try. Why is this thing? Not want to do right. I gotta tighten it up again. Which I did that, no problem. Like I said, folks, I ain't perfect. But we learn from our mistakes. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All I'm doing is taking my, my pair of pliers and grabbing those two little pieces, those hitches that go across the top, and just pulling it. Same thing I did when I said you grab the two bottom ones and pull and it tightens this up. That's all I'm doing, but I, you can't get a hold of it with your fingers, so I just use the pliers. Does that make sense? Like I've said before, man, I use these things jeweler's pliers I guess I don't know what they're called but they're conical shaped they're blunted point and have no teeth on them. that way if you slip you're less likely to snag your cord because there's no teeth on them you know, there's no grooves or anything like that okay now let's try this one more time Okay, that's more what we want. Now, we got it set up at eight and a quarter inches. Okay, so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up, because I got to, I'm not going to weave it like this because I can't see it. I'm going to set it up, my, get my setup going and get the camera moved so I can weave this and you can see and I'll show you how to do it. But come back and um, I'll show you how to do this. This, this. this is one of the basic ones that we, we all crack or, or cut our teeth on that we all need to learn how to do. Become very familiar with a Solomon weave because that's the basis for a lot of weaves. But give me a second. Let me get everything set up and I'll come right back. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got everything set up. Sorry that when I touch, hang on a second. Like I said, I'm not film maker, so when I touch and it shakes, I, I apologize for that. Um, if anybody, the Solomon weave, basic, every, a lot of things are based on it. This is actually based on it. I've got a tutorial on how I do the stitching to this, not the actual bracelet itself. But if you want to check, check that out, I'll put it in the cards. Um, it, this is a stitched, caged Solomon. Okay, now, what I said... We'll, we'll start. I'll go ahead and give you the specifications again. I've got a 5 8 inch plastic buckle. Um, got a two strand double cow hitch core. Um, I'm making this for my wrist, which is 7 inches. The add two, which I'll explain again, wrist measurement of 7 inches, you have to add to that to get your jig measurement. The add two for me is an inch and a quarter. So I've measured my jig out to eight and a quarter inches. Okay. Now, with all that said, let's see. I've got black as one color. And I'll show you how to do this. It's not hard. It's a basis for a lot of the weaves. Okay. First off, if you do this in two colors, which I most likely will make a video on showing the two colors. Whichever one, it doesn't matter which side you start on. But, let's see. Give me just a second and I'll show you. Let me, let me get a visual aid. I've got one right here behind me. Probably should have did this beforehand. But it'd be okay. And, my lazy, or my handy dandy laser paracorder pointer. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing, basically, a Solomon bar. Okay, we see how the side is in one color, and this middle is in another color. 
Okay. Whatever color you want to be in the middle, that's the cord you're going to lead with. Like I said, it doesn't matter which side it's on. Just know that whatever color, if you're doing it in two colors, the color you want in the middle is the cord you're going to lead with. So if you've set it up in two colors and one of them is, you know, this color here is mystique and charcoal gray. If you want the mystique to be in the middle, that's the cord you'll lead with. So let's, for the sake of this, this is the one we want in the middle. So that's the one we lead with. Okay? Now always be your lead cord. Always. But it's just, it flips from side to side. Right? Okay, now, this is all we do. We take our cord, we come over the top of our core strands. And we take our secondary cord, our lead cord and our secondary cord. Our lead cord comes over right here where my fingers are. And then we go underneath the two core strands and we come up through this loop that was created. We pull out our slide. Right. Now I'll zoom in and I'll show that again and hopefully it'll be it'll be you can see this just a little bit better. Your lead cord. That's the one that's gonna be in the middle of the bracelet. In this case this purple looking color, right? That's the one you start with. So what we do is we take it and we go over the two core strands. And we take our secondary cord and we go over right here, right here. And then we take this, we take this cord and we go underneath the two core strands. See, underneath, and we come up through this loop on this side, and we just pull out the slide. We give it a, a loose cinch. Let me back up. Just one. Give it a loose cinch, and then we kind of hold here, pulling this way, and we just push it up. And then you can tighten it up as tight as you want. Now remember, tension consistency. However much you pull on it this time, that's the amount you're going to pull on it the next time and the next time. That way it's straight all the way down the sides. See how they're, for the most part, they're straight all the way down the sides? That's what we're going for. If you pull one real tight and the next one not as tight, It'll be all, it won't look right. Tension consistency, right? Now me, I pull them as tight as I can. I'll take it in my hands. As I'm pulling out this way, I'm pushing my thumbs in right here. Pushing it up. Okay, that's the first one. Now, remember, this is the lead cord now. It switches sides. And this is the one that's going to be in the middle. All you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to flip sides with it. You're going to take this one. You're going to come over the two core strands. And then your secondary cord. You're going to go over right here. We say that? Over right here. And we're going to go underneath our two core strands here. And up through this loop that we've created on this side. And we pull out the slack. That's all there is to it. I need to just give it a loose cinch. Push it up toward the buckle. Hold hold here. Holding back this way. You know what I'm saying? Opposing forces. Get Push it up. And then pull it tight. Same thing. Lead strands, this one, still the same cord, it's just on a different side. Cross over the two in the middle. Cross over the top here. 
and then we come under the two core strands and up through this loop we've created. We pull the slide through. Loose cinch to the top, pushing it up, pulling it tight. And that's all there is to this. And I do this so you can see just how I do this. Now, once you do it and you get the basics of over here, under there, your hand movements and the muscle memory will come. That's why I say practice. Okay, I'll show you one more time. Our lead strand is this one. If I zoom in a little bit, maybe you can see this here. Let me see if this will help. Yeah, it helps a little bit. A little bit. Doesn't focus very well, but it helps. I'll show you. I'll show you again. Our lead strand. We come over the two core strands right here. And then our secondary one comes over right here. And we take it and we go up under and through this loop on this side and we pull out the slide. Loose cinch, pushing it up, and then a cinch. And that's, that's all there is to this. All right? Now when I get down to the end, I'll come back and uh, I'll show you how I finish this one off. Okay, folks, I'm back. I done got it out to the end. And uh, I'll show you the last couple of steps. And I got a video for this called How to Cut and Burn and Hide the Ends of a Solomon Bar, which I'm going to show you how to do that right here. Because, you know, like I, I've said, my principles is neat, clean, and tight. And let me go ahead and finish this, and I'll, I'll explain it. It'll make sense. Go over, over, under. Hold tight. Yeah, we'll call that the last one. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back out. And we'll take it off the jig and get the jig out of the way. Before I cut and burn it, let's just see. Let's 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 check the fit on this. I always do this on camera, especially if it's made for me. If it's not, if it's not one made for me, cause sometimes I I'm, I'm making customers bracelets. This one I'm just making for the video. I can get it to go in there. Just get the tip of my finger up under it. So like I said, seven inch wrist and I add to an inch and a quarter. Now that's kind of a snug fit. If you want a looser fit, you might want to add just a little bit more. But, right, there we go. Basic solid bar. Wait a minute, you know what? Let's try that again. I put it on backwards. These are contoured buckles, and I just put it on. Buckles are on fine. I just put it on my wrist backwards. You know, you can put it either way. Maybe that's why it was so snug. I was thinking, why is that thing snug like that? It shouldn't be. Let me try that again. I bet you that's why. A little bit of the contour on them buckles. Yeah, so that's a little bit better. I can get my finger up under it just a little bit more. And that's the way I like it. I don't like them real snug. I don't want it to leave marks on my arm when I'm wearing it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's it. Now, I'll show you how I do this. Now, I'm not going to completely finish this. And I'll explain to you why. But, I'll zoom in. Hopefully you can see this. If we look, all right. 
I'll explain this. We look. We see how this one on this side is coming out and it's angling down. This would be the display side of the bracelet, right? And this, this is the side, the non-display side, the side that's going to sit against the skin of your wrist. This is the side that's going to be facing outward. This is the display side. Okay, so if you look at this one on this side, how this cord is coming out and it's pointing down. It's already on the back side of the bracelet, which is where we want it. Now this one, if you, maybe if you look at it like this, this one is pointing toward the top of the bracelet. And I know, I've seen a lot of people, they'll, they'll cut and burn it right there and you got this big burnt spot. We want to hide that. We want to keep it neat and clean, right? So, like I said, in that other video, how to cut and burn and hide the ends of the solvent. So it's, it's on there. You can do a search on my channel and you'll find it. But this is the way I do this. And I, I use this principle for a lot of weaves. Get them around the back. And the way I do this is the way I do it for a lot of bracelets. But this one right here is already on the back side. Now let's see. I'm going to zoom in and hopefully you will be able to see this. All we're going to do, trying to get the lighting right. All we're going to do, this, this is the non-display side. This is the back. This is where we want the cut and burns. This one is already back there. This one is facing up toward the display side. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is follow this one out to the end. And we're just going to run it up under itself. Because this cord right here, we want to take it and run it up under. But if you follow it back, it goes through this loop. And that's it right there. All we're going to do is run it back up under itself right here. Makes sense. So you're going to take this in, just follow the end of the cord and run it back up under itself right there. And pull out that slide. Alright. And now to get all this tight, I usually just take my pliers and I grab right over here on this little, this little loop sticking out. I just kind of pull it and it tightens this back up. All right, that tightened up that piece. Now we're going to just take this and it's going to pull that loop in. And I usually flip it over and look at it and you see how it's got like a lump sticking out on the side. Just take it and kind of squeeze it with your thumb as you're pulling that cord. And just, now it's not sticking out so much. Makes sense? Now, like I say, I'm not going to completely cut and burn this thing as a finished product because I am going to do some stitching on it. So, like I've said in a lot of my videos, if you're going to do stitching, Obviously, don't pull it so tight. Now, this one, it doesn't matter so much, especially the way I'm going to stitch it, because you, you can pull it as tight as you want, and you can usually get your little stitching needle through there. But, if you know you're going to do stitching, when you go to do your cut and burns, obviously, you got all this. And I'll, I'll throw this out there. I started off a 7-inch bracelet, or a, a bracelet for a 7-inch wrist, and I started with 10 feet. And I've got just that over a foot of this and a foot in this of excess. So figure that into your, you know, your calculations of how much cords you, you need. I'd rather have scrap to cut off and not have enough to finish the bracelet. Okay, with that said, um, if you're going to stitch it, I always will cut these two cords or however many cords there are, whatever bracelet it is. 
I leave about an inch and a half, two inches. Why? First off, I don't want all this in the way when I'm trying to stitch. I don't want this getting tangled with my micro cord. But, don't cut it so close and try to cut and burn it now because that burn, that, that hard piece of plastic may prevent you from getting your stitching needle through where you need to stitch. But you don't want to cut it so short that it's going to go back up in itself and it's going to cause it to come un, unwoven, unweaved. It makes sense. So leave yourself about an inch and a half. That way you don't have all this in the way when you're stitching and it's not going to go back up in there. And when you get done and all the stitching and all that, you come back and you can tighten all of it up. Make sure it's all tight. Right? That makes sense. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut these right here. And I say this. Here, let me back out. Ooh, that one got me. Now these right here, I'm not going to try to smooth them out. Why? Because this is eventually just going to get cut off. And it's too short to do anything with. So I don't really, you know. But I do want to burn these in just so I don't get a bunch of frays while I'm trying to work. You see, it makes sense. And just let it, just let it cool like it is. But that's it. That's how you do a, a Solomon bar. It's not, it's not very complicated. Just practice it. You know, practice your core strands. Two strand, two strand double cow hitch, four strand, six strand, all that. And like I showed in the beginning how, there's, you know, two strand core with a double cow hitch, you can either feed it in completely from one side and do both cow hitches, or you can just do, find a halfway point and do it. Learn how to do it both ways. Get good at though at setting up your core strands, because I know, I, I, and I, I say this because of myself. I know that when I started doing this, I struggled with setting up these core strands, like doing that double cow hitch the way I did it from the side, and I fed it all through, and I made one hitch, and then I fed it and made the other hitch. I, I had to go back and watch the tutorial video on how to do that. Every time I went to set up a course, I had to go back and watch that video. Until I finally said, you know what, just learn this. And I sat there one day and just did it over and over and over. And, you know, you saw in the beginning, I'm not perfect. And I have to stop and think about it for a second. Do I go over or under? I have to think for a second. But the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And it won't be so intimidating, if you will. Because I know some of this stuff was intimidating to me. Like a full core strand I, when I seen the bracelet I wanted to try out for the first time and I saw that it had a full core strand, I was just like, oh. And I'd sit there and I'd struggle and struggle and struggle. Now, full core strand, it, it's, it's, it's nothing to me. It just, because I've done it so many times and I've practiced it and I've learned, like I say, take you a piece of scrap cord, you know, six, seven, eight feet, you know, five, six, seven, eight feet, however long, and just set your jig up, and don't set it up, you know, real real far apart. Just set it up three or four inches apart. All you're do, going to do is practice setting up core strands. Just practice, practice, practice. You know, set up. It's like, do core strand drills. <laughs> Two strand core. Four strand core. You know, take it off. Six strand core. And just, and just do it, and you'll learn it. And I know you're like, oh, that's just... Yeah, but in the long run, it will, it will build your confidence for one thing, but you won't struggle with setting up these core strands. You won't be intimidated like I was. In what I seen that full core strand, I was like, Oh, I hate these things. I hate these things. I hate these things. But I got to the point where I practiced them so much that it's almost second nature. You can just, you just do it and you don't even think about it. Does that make sense? Learn, it's like anything, learn the basics, the fundamentals, and then you start building on that. I know a lot of people, they want to jump right into 
you know, a double stitch wide Bane's cuff. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa, whoa, slow down. <coughs> <coughs> you got to learn how to walk before you can run. And you got to learn how to crawl before you can walk, if that makes any sense. But I'll end it with that. I'm going to be doing a video on stitching this also. So, you know, this one will probably go up first, and then the other one will. But uh I think I'm going to just do a basic herringbone stitch. That's something a lot of It looks really good, and it's not that hard to do. But uh I think that's what I'm going to do. But I appreciate you watching. Give us a like. Put us a comment below. Tell me what you think. What kind of tutorial bracelets bracelets for what two tours would you like to see and uh i'll end it like i end them all keep it neat keep it clean and keep it tight happy weaving folks